Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Amy. And in today's video, we're gonna go over everything about the Mini Kelly. The weight, the size, the pros and cons, all the comparisons, all the mod shots. And if you've missed my previous video where I shared what fits in this bag, you can click here to watch it. This bag was loaned to me by a Canadian consignment called Lux Du Jour. Before we get started, I wanted to thank today's video sponsor and it is Ideal Jewelry. Those of you who've never heard of Ideal, they are a diamond fine jewelry company and in fact they use lab grown diamonds so it's a very sustainable product and it's more price friendly the gold that they use are 14 karat solid gold and they are a hundred percent conflict free because these are fine jewelry they will never oxidize or discolor every piece is handmade and their craftsmanship is just top-notch but the most exciting part of their jewelry is their modular design their modular design allows you to mix and match and have so much fun and be super creative with it and you can wear it in several different ways i have been wearing this piece non-stop with my hermes necklace i never remove it i sleep with it i shower with it not only am i super impressed with their quality i'm so excited to collaborate with them again if there's anything else that i like as much as rose gold it is white gold the pair that i'm wearing right now is called the romi and everything i picked this time are in white gold what i like about the romi is that they look look so sophisticated they are present but not loud and because it's curved it looks like you're wearing huggies but they're not and so they're very very comfortable and i'll just show you the difference between the larger stud so this is the larger stud that i chose last time in rose gold and it looks like this with the romi and this time i chose the petite stud so the smallest stud and they look like this. The second pair of earrings that I chose are called Ono, and they are so super fun. Not only are they very, very classic looking, but they can be very edgy. When you wear it in front, it looks more classic and elegant. When you wear it on the back, it looks more edgy and fun and young. It can totally be a conversation piece. Okay, now the pendants. I know it looks a little busy. In fact, I don't mind it. I might just wear all like this. They will get a little tangled like the chains, but I just fix it every morning and that's fine. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna remove my rose gold pieces so that you can really concentrate on the newest pieces. If you compare with the chain that comes with the Farandol Hermes necklace, which I love by the way, it's just, dull like it's not sparkly at all you see what i mean this this chain just is super sparkly so it actually really elevates my Hermes necklace this is the jane pendant and it's so pretty you can wear it with the stones from big to small or the other way around which is so versatile last but not least i also picked their solo three diamond pendant it can be worn alone of course or it can be stuck with your other jewelry without overpowering other jewelry as well which is what i love about all their designs they kind of mix and match really well but you can also wear it completely alone. I will make sure to link all the new pieces that I picked this time in the description box. Make sure to check it out. I think my coupon code is still good, so I'll also link that down below. Let's get back to business. The bottom here measures 19 centimeters. The top here measures about 16.3. The height from here to here is about 12 centimeters. The depth here on the bottom from here to here is 5.4 centimeters the drop here of the handle is 5 centimeter the strap length is 97 centimeter but the drop from here so from the top here to the top of the bag 47.5 centimeters which is about 18 and three quarter inches but if it's from the top of the handle to here then it's 16 and a half inch or 42 centimeters. This bag, like I said, was lent to me. And this is a pre-owned piece. This one is a 2017 Mini Kelly in chevre leather. And the color is blue Hydra. The hardware is gold. The previous owner didn't remove the stickers on the hardware so it's still on the two plates
Most of you probably know that I own the Birkin 25. This is my only quota bag and mine is in rose gold hardware in black Togo. Between gold and rose gold, the difference is there, but it's not so big that it would make you sway one way or the other. I think I like both hardware just as much and it really just depends on the combination of the bag. So as a side by side, and by the way, all my stickers are off. <laughs> so that's why it's so shiny and so beautiful. So obviously the rose gold, there's more of a pink undertone to the hardware, whereas the gold, and again, this one, it still has the protective sticker, so it doesn't shine as much. The difference is quite subtle in my opinion, and it looks really good on the blue color. I think if this bag had rose gold, it would look a little strange. <laughs> but um that's the difference in hardware and by the way the size of the sangles are identical uh, the plate also so um yeah they use the same size hardware on the 25 birkin another thing i wanted to discuss about hardware on this bag is how little these clips are so just let me remove one side to show you they are adorable but still in a very chunky way and by the way they are a little difficult to remove and i discussed that in my birkin kelly constance comparison collaboration video that i did with kat i was able to try her kelly 25 and so after trying her kelly 25 and now the kelly mini i have a pretty good idea of the two bags the hardware is really really pretty it has a very subtle stamp but it's definitely there it says Hermes and the other side is plain and it's still really chunky for its size the Kelly 25 one is quite chunky and is very substantial and this one is still substantial but it's just very shrunken version and it basically looks like the size of my pinky it's quite small and I have very small pinkies. Every time I get my nails done professionally, they have a very hard time doing my pinky because it's literally the size of a child's pinky. It's very small. <laughs> like the nail, the nail bed is very tiny. It's so tiny that they always have a hard time. The brushes are too big. And so I'm just saying how this little hardware here is quite small. And because of that, and already you have to angle it at 45 degrees to get it on this hook here. Because it's so tiny, it's already so much harder to put in addition to how small this is. The Mini Kelly, which only comes in the cellier style, cellier meaning that it is finished on the outside, so you will see the stitching on the outside of the bag. It usually only comes in either Epsom or Chevre, as far as I know. I think it's also available in box in the past, um, possibly other leathers, but I think the most common is probably these two. And so, yeah, just to give you an idea of the difference, you can notice that on Chevre, and I'm guessing this one is Maison, I'm not even sure because it doesn't say, um, it's a little bit more shiny and the grain is also a little bit longer if that makes sense like the grain runs vertically also the mini kelly comes in epsom leather a lot which has more of a matte appearance it still reflects light a little bit but it definitely has a bit more of a matte appearance compared to the chev leather Epsom is known to be a bit stiffer, whereas Chev is a little bit more malleable, you can say, but it's still structured on this bag, but it definitely has more give. And so it's a preference thing. And I'm sure if you were offered a mini Kelly, just take it because these are so hard to come by. But just for good measure, I'm going to do a side by side comparison very quick for you guys, because why not? I'm not going to have this bag forever. So side by side with my Nano Speedy, we'll do the other side so you can really see it. If you compare the bottom length, then the Kelly is longer, but the top length is the same. Less width for the Kelly. Mini flap rectangular. As you can see, the rectangular flap 
is longer because I think in reality the mini flap is 20 centimeter. Yeah, so it's about a centimeter longer. But the width is definitely a lot less. The square mini, these are all seasonal bags, so they can still vary from season to season. The width is definitely a lot more on the square mini. Uh, the height is a little bit more similar on these two. And for good measure, again, the square mini has more depth than the rectangular mini. And they fit about the same for me, except that, of course, if you have the newest iPhone Pro Max, then it will not fit in this bag. So I went ahead and changed the jewelry. Like I said, this one can be worn behind, so that's how it would look like. And if you wear it on the front, it's a little bit more classic. Okay, pros and cons. Let's start with the cons and end with the pros. The main con, which I think everyone will agree is how incredibly hard incredibly incredibly hard it is to get offered this bag in the past before the whole mini trend was super popular and also maybe when Hermes bags were not as popular yet it was maybe a little easier to get but nowadays it's very very hard not only is there a shortage at Hermes right now in general, but this quota bag requires the highest pre-spend. I won't be able to tell you how much because it varies from place to place and it also has a lot of luck and timing involved, of course. My local store here in Vancouver, I heard, and of course those are all just what I was told by friends, acquaintances, and so on, that this bag requires a five racial spend. It means that you have to spend five times the equivalent of how much this bag costs in order to get offered one. And that is not even guaranteed because again, the shortage, uh, the demand is very high and there's just not enough to go around. So not only do you have to do a very high racial pre-spend, but you possibly will need to wait a long, long time. One of my good friends here, she's been with my store for over five years and she still could not get her hands on a Mini Kelly. Is she an exception? Is she the norm? How would I know? <laughs> All I know is that it's incredibly hard to get and if you've got one, you are either extremely lucky, so good timing, and they just had stock when you were there or you just have a very nice essay <laughs> that really helped you out con number two which applies to all kelly's although i do think that the mini kelly is probably the the least bad with the kelly bag every time you open and close your bag it scratches hardware to hardware so we're talking about this hardware scratching this hardware so the bottom or whichever side is on the bottom of this turn lock here will always scratch against the I guess the the bottom of this plate on the inside so you wouldn't really see it on the plate so much not sure it will show up on the camera because obviously with all the reflections but either side of this whichever side was scratching against the plate inside we'll get all the micro scratches. With the Mini Kelly, it's slightly better only because this bag is very light and unless you really filled it and it was really hard to close, then the scratching will be worse. Another con of the Mini Kelly is that the strap is generally pretty short for most people. I think that 97 centimeter is the length of the strap before. I heard that some Mini Kellys have a slightly longer strap and I'm not sure if this also again varies from season to season or just if they're changing it, I'm not sure. But this strap, I measured it to be 97 centimeters, so just under a meter, is a bit short. For me, the drop is good enough as a crossbody, but the moment that I wear a very large coat in the winter, it's not going to be a good crossbody bag. Now granted, this bag is very tiny and you don't really need to crossbody this bag. 
unless you're just trying to run. But, um, you know, some people like the option to crossbody it and it's not going to be possible for everyone. Because the Kelly is such a narrow design and it also tapers up to even smaller here, you can't really fill it with things that are very bulky on top here. Otherwise, you just won't be able to close the bag. So you are limited to what can fit, uh, not only because of the size, but also you just can't fit anything that is too bulky here. So forget about standing up some of your SLGs, which even though it will fit technically the height wise, it may not be possible to close your bag. OK, let's talk about some pros. I love that the Mini Kelly is tiny. And because it is tiny, you can only fit the essential, but because it still fits the essentials, for me, I'm able to fit my phone, my six key, my card holder, a couple of lipsticks, and that is great because I can get around town with just these bare essentials. It will never get too heavy. I totally forgot to talk about the weight at the beginning, but this bag is super light. It only comes out at 220 grams, which is less than half a pound. If you do end up using it open sometimes, it should still be okay. Obviously, you don't want to always do that, especially with the larger size Kellys. But with the Mini Kelly, and especially if your phone is already in your hands, really, there's not much weight in this bag. It doesn't look like it would damage the bag as badly as the larger sister. Another pro for the Mini Kelly is that it's modern. It has sharp edges. It's a mini size, therefore super trendy, but also because mini size are never going to go away, trust me. And so it's a modern bag in my opinion. Another pro because of its tiny size is that it will literally and virtually look good in any color and leather. Even though blue is not my favorite color, really it isn't. I don't mind wearing blue on my body, like I don't mind jeans and I don't mind a navy scarf, which I wore on my collab video, but I just don't do blue bags. And it's not that I don't think it's pretty, I think it's really, really pretty, but for some reason I never reach for my blue bags. I'd rather reach for a red bag or a black bag. <laughs> I'd reach for pink more than blue probably, which says a lot because I don't do pink bags either. <laughs> Um, unless it's very like red pink, like Rose Mexico for me is a good pink. This is very, very saturated. It's almost like red. So yeah, I would reach for a red bag for sure, but blue, mm, eh. but it looks great in any color. I think this mini size looks great in all neutrals, of course. In fact, the neutrals look a bit boring. The colors is where it shines, I feel. Like I said earlier, it typically comes in either Epsom or Chevre, but it can also come in exotic. It can also come in box. It can also come in fill in the blanks, you guys. Um, so I feel like because it's a smaller size bag, even in exotic, it would not be too overwhelming. I personally wouldn't I, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy an exotic Birkin 25 or an exotic Kelly 25 not yet anyway because I'm I just want my regular bags at this point unless I built up a collection then yes I might venture into the full exotic a bit of touch is okay but for the Kelly mini I would totally do exotic the full bag because it's so small anyway I would be I would be okay with that because it's small enough that I wouldn't feel too strange wearing it even on a daily basis. Another pro, which is also a huge con, so I'm gonna lump it together, is that the resale value for Mini Kellys is very, very good. So if you have a Mini Kelly to sell, chances are you will not only make your money back, but you will also make a lot of profit. However, I'm not saying that you will make your money back from all the pre-spend that you've had to do, but the resale market based on the initial retail of this is very 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 favorable now that is a con because it also means that on the resale market or if you're looking to buy one without going through your store it's gonna be incredibly expensive i was told that in the past 
it was kind of over 30k and now it's kind of gone down a little bit it's in the high 20ks which is still a lot of money and we're talking usd by the way the resale value is so high that it makes it so difficult for any of us to even contemplate buying because it's a large chunk of money on a bag that technically didn't cost that much to get if you were to buy retail of course you've had to do the pre-spend which is part of the journey, which is part of the whole, you know, you're still acquiring all these things, but it's still a lot of time and effort that you wasted getting this bag. And once you get it, if you do resell it, you're never gonna get it back because are you gonna redo that journey again? Which you can, but it'll take a long time. And again, you'll need to spend again a lot. And you'd be very, very lucky if your essay offers you two Mini Kelly in a row. I'm a huge fan of the Mini Kelly is it worth it though i guess it's debatable i think if i was offered one i will take it even though technically speaking you don't get as much for the mini kelly what i mean by that is that apparently the mini kelly doesn't come with the lock it doesn't come with the clochette it doesn't even come with the raincoat so i almost feel like they packaged this bag to be sort of like a non quota bag but they are selling it as a quota bag because it's so popular and therefore i think that you're not getting as much for what you've had to go through and pay for with everything combined so it's arguable like i said but i will still take it because of how ridiculously hard it is to to get one that is not to say that the kelly 25 or kelly 28 are very easy to get on the contrary, they're not easy to get either, but they are a little bit more common than the Mini Kelly. The Mini Kelly, they just don't make as many, I was told, or at least we don't get them as many. I think the only reason why I kind of favor the Mini Kelly is because I know I will get a lot of use out of it. With the 25 size being a bit more formal and sort of like a medium sized bag, it's so small, but it's definitely bigger than this. It becomes more dressy and it's harder to wear on um, all the time. For example, I wouldn't wear it to an amusement park. Not that I would really do that with this bag either, but if I wanted to, I could just wear it crossbody. Um, on a winter day, if it was bad weather, I could still wear this underneath my coats and just wrap it. Whereas I wouldn't do that with a Kelly 25. If I'm just going for errands in a super casual outfit, I may not take the Kelly 25, but I will totally take this. Don't forget to check out Ideal. I love, love, love their pieces. And in case you've only fast forward to this part because you didn't watch the first part, I will have all of these pieces linked in the description box so you know where to find them. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. And also you can support me further by becoming a channel member. 
have a great day and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye.